So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here and today I'm going to put some milk under the microscope and I think it's actually quite interesting because I was able to see so-called Brownian motion of the fat globules. I need to explain this a little bit, it's quite a bit of a, of a mouthful. When you put milk under the microscope and when you go to a very high magnification you're able to see oil droplets and those oil droplets um, essentially they start to move around or they vibrate. And uh, this vibration is called Brownian motion and which was discovered back in 1827 by a scientist called Robert Brown and I think that this is one of the reasons this Brownian motion why um, the oil does not separate or the fat does not separate uh, from the milk and I need to explain this a little bit. Well first of all when you put milk uh, or other liquids under the microscope then you're able to see that uh, very often there's movement going on. Um, very often there's this kind of a streaming motion of the particles and this can be due to several reasons. Um, this could be for example because the water evaporates and this causes some movement um, or it could also be the liquid spreading beneath the cover glass uh, on the microscope slide. This can cause some streaming motion. Um, and also do not forget about the so-called the heat of the, the microscope lamp, um, which causes so-called convection currents because uh, the warmer water in, in expands and uh, therefore pushes the colder water to the side. And this can also cause some, some movement. But when you really zoom in um, a lot, uh, then you're able to see that the motion of the individual fat globules um, yeah, sometimes it's very random. Um, indeed, they, they appear to be vibrating. And not only that, the smaller globules, the smaller particles, they vibrate more than the larger ones. And this is already something that a British scientist, Robert Brown, discovered back in 1827. And uh, he put some pollen of a plant uh, under the microscope and the pollen were fairly large. They did not move. But between the pollen grains, there were smaller particles. Um, cell fragments, um, also maybe some cell organelles, and they were vibrating and moving, moving. And he thought that this vibration, this movement, this random movement was actually a sign of life. We now know that this is not uh, because of uh, their, them being alive, but because um, of uh, the so-called the Brownian motion, as it's called. And uh, this is because uh, when um, something has a temperature, then the particles, they vibrate and they move. And uh, those water molecules, they move and vibrate. And they bump against uh, the object and they cause the object to vibrate. But this only becomes visible if this object like the oil globules, is sufficiently small. Um, for larger objects, it's simply too stable and they don't move um, around when something bumps into them. Yeah, so this is basically something that Robert Brown discovered in, um, in 1827. Um, and another scientist, uh, his name was Ludwig Wiener, um, he wanted to now explore this a little bit more. And he indeed discovered that uh, the vibration of the particles um, depends uh, um, on the size. Um, and uh, of course, it is not a sign of life uh, because uh, this this can be seen uh, also by many non-living non uh, particles. Of course, uh, another scientist, uh, you know him, Albert Einstein. Yes, uh, this Albert Einstein, he even provided a theoretical foundation. Um, and uh, yeah, lots of math. <laughs> um, yeah, he actually uh, predicted Brownian motion also theoretically and mathematically. So you see that uh, this uh, observation also has now some very solid theoretical foundation. And Brownian motion indeed is, is a very important concept um, when it relates uh, to, to particle physics, for example. Now, um, when I put the milk under the microscope, um, um, yeah, I was kind of wondering, maybe maybe could it be that it is actually this Brownian motion that causes, the, or prevents rather, the, uh, the oil droplets from, from coalescing, from joining together. Um, so, um, and I think um, this could be indeed the case because the particles, the oil droplets, they move too quickly and they cannot really um, yeah, latch onto each other to form a larger fat droplet. And I think that this is the reason why milk has to be homogenized. And uh, what happens is, is that the company that produces the milk will... Uh, uh, press the milk through a nozzle, like, like in a spray bottle, and this breaks up the larger fat droplets into very small microscopic fat droplets. And those fat droplets then are not able to join together. Of course, there can also be other chemical reasons. Um, there are certain milk proteins present called emulsifiers, casein being one of those proteins. And these emulsifiers, they also chemically prevent, um, they also latch on to those fat droplets and also prevent uh, the, um, the, uh, the oil droplets from, from joining uh, together. So I think uh, it's uh, with a very simple um, observation, we can actually see quite a few interesting um, things here. Um, yeah, hope that you liked the video. Um, try it out yourself. Uh, just make sure that you do not use too much milk. You might also want to dilute the milk a little bit in water yeah, to make the droplets visible a little bit better. Yeah, tell me what you found. Happy microbe hunting as always. I'll see you around next time. Bye-bye.